Hello YouTubes, this is Grimweird coming back at you with more Enigmatica 2 Expert Mod Pack playthrough action for Minecraft 1.12.2. As always, we are joined by my lovely avatar, Zombie Steve. In this episode, uh, we I took a look at my stock of empowered goods, because of course I overbuilt uh, when I was making enough terrestrial thingamajigs for turning into litharite. Um, and so I took a look at how much I had left, and I had enough left to make quite a few more um, litharite. That, and I robbed where we were at here. We had like 30 or 40 some there, and I went ahead and made some more manually in the uh, um, from our empowered goods. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and try and get the uh, tier 1 void resource miner going today so we can start getting some mica um, to help us upgrade the uh, tier one to tier two uh, one of the things that i wanted to pull out is so you use black concrete in this uh, um, stuff and uh, black concrete it's pretty easy to make if we take a look at the recipe um, you make the powdered stuff it's just gravel sand and some black dye no bigs and it makes eight um, per dye so that's not too bad um, so i needed some more of that um, last time i just sort of placed it in a pond and then mined it back out of the pond um, to get it wet and to turn it from powder to concrete um, but when i was looking at other ways to do that there was this hydrator from cyclic so i thought i'd build that and give it a shot it was not too expensive to build and it turned out to work pretty good. Um, it took water from the top um, through from the aqueous accumulator. It doesn't use a crap ton of water. Um, so even the slow aqueous accumulator was able to keep up with it. Um, and I you know, stole our power cell from the empower since we're not using it this moment to power this bad boy. But I think the hydrator was basically just made to mass produce concrete. It only takes 25 millibuckets of water uh, per concrete, so that is uh, far better than something like the fluid transposer, which will also do this, but takes like one bucket, so 1,000 millibuckets uh, per concrete or something insane like that. Um, so actually, let's just check that out. Um, so if you look at this, the fluid infuser takes one bucket to do this, whereas this guy only takes... This guy, uh, if we look at the hydrator, it only takes 25 millibuckets. So 1,000 versus 25 makes this uh, hydrator a good deal. And it wasn't that expensive to build. Um, I think if we take a look at that, it was a dropper, which I had stolen off of a pirate ship, because the pirate ships use droppers, I think, for cannon. Um, or maybe not. Anyway, I had a free dropper somewhere. Um, so a block of iron and some clay and some terracotta. Um, so when you need to make concrete uh, in Enigmatica 2 Expert, I highly recommend trying out this bad boy. Um, and I do think it's automatable to um, put incoming solids from one side and then export to the other side and water from the top and then taking the uh, power in through the back or the bottom. So you could automate this if you needed to make a crap ton of uh, concrete. And so one of the other reasons I did this is because I think when we get into either nuclear craft and or advanced rocketry, we might need to make a whole bunch of concrete. But anywho, I uh, just wanted to show you that real quick. And that's all I'm going to need of that for now, but I'm sort of glad I have it to know about it so that I can use it in the future. Put this over here again. And um, so yeah, I uh, am rounding up the things I need. I've got the concrete. I've got most of my connectors made. These are the bad boys that require vast amounts. So each of them requires four, and each of those require a block of tin and a signalum. Um, so, you know, a total of 464 signalum ingots, which is quite a bit. I don't have them automated quite yet um, because I haven't 
haven't gotten around to automating and doing ME stuff with fluids. Um, I think if I uh, if I figured out how, I could do that, and that would make those a bit easier. Um, but the blocks of tin are easier this time, just because I was aware I was going to need, you know, forty one hundred ingots worth of tin to make the resource miner, as opposed to being very shocked and surprised when we started the uh, ore void miner. Um, so I've sort of been making it in the background and have all the tin and signal them I need. I just need to make a few more. Um, I ran myself out of um, aluminum brass. So as soon as I make that, I think I'll have most of the things I need ready to make the rest of the resource miner, and we will set that up and see how it goes. So I'll be right back when I'm ready for setting it up and pick a place for it. And we are back and ready to make our uh, Tier 1 resource miner. So this is going strong still. Um, we're up to 78 erodium. So actually we're about uh, ready to, um, probably next episode, uh, upgrade this to a Tier 2 or a miner. So that's going to be good. Uh, the thing that I will have to worry about is getting mica from the resource miner to make the um, enhancements that need to go into it as part of the upgrade. So um, the one thing I noticed, uh, I was just looking through what we got here, and one thing I noticed is we're getting some mana infused ore. That's nice because I don't think that spawns in the overworld or in the uh, nether. Um, you can craft it by infusing uh, or putting diamonds into mana steel, infusing diamonds into uh, mana steel, uh, but it's handy to actually get it. Other than that, I haven't seen anything yet that's too exciting other than the normal um, the normal ores. So lithrite and erodium are what we're getting so far. And uh, yeah, so we're getting there. So I've cleared out a spot and um, these, as they grow in tiers, also grow in size. So right now it's a 7x7 seven seven base, and it'll be, uh, I think, like a 9x9, nine 11x11, nine, 11 11, and 13x13. 13 13. Um, so I think when we get up to tier 5 or tier 6, it's going to be all the way out to here. So I've got two spaces, and then have made spaces for 13, 11, 9, 7, 5, 3, 0. I've put them on the same line for a center. And let's build this bad boy. So yeah, I think they're both four high. It says the structure is five um, high, but I think it counts that you need an open spot here for, for um, seeing the ground. But let's just see what happens here. Oh, and I wanted to uh, mention that uh, we're putting a white laser lens in it because one of the things, I think the most important thing immediately we need out of this is mica. And mica comes only from resource miner and the preferred lens for it at tier one is a uh, white laser lens. So that was just a normal laser lens, which is an H pattern made out of glass. And I used bone meal as uh, one bone meal as the die since that was really handy. So we're filling it in and filling it in. Oh, I think I'm breaking it by leaving this in place. So we'll get rid of that so it can put in its last couple of blocks. And there it goes. So assemble to true. I got a nice white laser graphic going. So it should be working. So now I'm going to... I need to get it power. Um, don't think I have a power cell, so I'm going to steal this power cell 
and then just make another one. So for right now, we'll grab that and a crate for things to go into. Um, so power cell, bing, and crate, doink. So we'll slap that down there. Make sure it's outputting. Slap down a crate there. And I think it takes it a moment to power up, I think. And there it goes. We're making stuff. The other one was slow to get moving, so I think there's some refractory period where it's like coming to full power or something. So we'll give that a moment and come back and check on it. If we look at this guy. It's certainly not super fast, which is why I'm in such a hurry to use this erodium to get this one in particular up to uh, tier two. So I think the next thing I should probably think about is I'll probably want to keep it a, a magenta laser long enough to get a rhodium for that guy. But at some point I'm going to want to change it out and go for, let's look at um, void So this guy uses Chironite. And we can start getting the Chironite there, and it's preferred as a purple lens. So I'm not sure if it makes more sense to let this guy go until I have enough um, enough erodium to upgrade this guy and then switch it, upgrade it to tier two um, and start working on Chironite with a purple lens or not. So I'll have to think about that and see where we're at. All right, this guy's starting to cook along. We're getting terracotta, sand, slate, basalt. So it looks like lots of stones. I think you can also get grass in here, uh, sands and micas and so there's lots of stuff. So we'll take a look at that and see how long that goes. Um, if we look here, tier two, we're gonna need four null speed or accuracy. What does the null do? I assume that's a blacklist kind of thing. Let's see, so we go at environmental I don't even know what these things look like ah. maybe down here all right let's go this I'm pretty sure accuracy is what I'm gonna want palladium crystal Uh oh, here we go again. So I'm confused. Looks like I probably won't be able to put accuracy in my tier two because I can't get palladium crystal until I have a tier three. So that means I will want over the other ones. Uh, speed or accuracy so speed requires a rhodium so we can do that lock 
a redstone, like a... So I'll need to remember I'm going to need four extra rhodium for speed. And I'm going to need... So this I can make... Um, I got all that stuff, including a whole bunch of wither dust. So I'm good there. And just out of curiosity, let's see if it says what the null does. It doesn't say, but I have a feeling that's just sort of a, a non-upgrade placeholder. Hey, we've got a couple mica. All right, so we are on our way. Very exciting. So I think if I just let this bad boy go while I uh, start looking through and assembling the uh, components to upgrade this to uh, tier 2, hopefully by the time I'm ready to do that, I'll have enough erodium to actually upgrade that one as well. Yeah. Maybe I'll just let this bad boy run overnight while I'm asleep. <laughs> and then we should have enough erodium tomorrow. All right, so we've accomplished things. We have uh, got our or void ord miner and our void resource miner up and going. Um, let's see, my chores are I need to make one more power cell. I'd love to get into the... Uh, what is that, uh, the name of that... Thing. I think it's Flux Flux Networks. I'd love to get into this and start using um, Flux Points and Flux Plugs. I used those f three or four years ago when I was playing. Uh, the only other time I played a heavily modded tech um, world, and um, I liked them. Unfortunately, to get your first flux core, you have to, or your first bunch, it takes I forget what this was, but um, something in here made me think that you had actually needed some dimensional stuff. See, I can make all that. Charged draconium block. All right. So one of the things I mentioned an episode or two ago was that, you know, maybe after all of this crafting I've been doing, um, I should do something a little bit more adventuresome and, like, go to... Uh, go to uh, Twilight Forest. I've never been, don't know much about it. I think there are a series of bosses there to beat. Um, and I think it has Draconium ore down near Bedrock. So those are both good reasons to go there, is to play with that kind of stuff. I could have sworn there was something nasty keeping me from making this bad boy. Um, to make flux cores. But now I'm not seeing it. Maybe it was just that I had to wait until I got a sag mill from Ender.io. So maybe now that I've got my sag mill from Ender.io just recently, Maybe I can make this bad boy and get into flux networks and stop using power cells and start uh, using flux plugs. Because I'm not seeing anything here that's going to stop me necessarily. Let's see, 
see flux controller, flux block. Huh, no, I think I just must have been waiting for the Inder IO sag mill, which we got an episode or two ago. So maybe that's something I'll work on in between uh, upgrading these. I sort of got to keep these upgrading because I'm sure I'll need them bigger, badder, and nastier before the end of the day. Sponge. All right, so that's cruising along, and um, I'm babbling at this point. So that's what's coming up. Maybe a run to Twilight Forest. Um, maybe we'll try and break into Flux Networks and get away from uh, using power cells, which are pretty lossy. Um, I'm losing 10% every time I beam power all over the place here. And while it doesn't bother me yet, I don't think, it may eventually. But that's a good point. Let's take a look at our power situation now that we're running two void miners. Our output is apparently only 5,100 per tick. Um, we're still not burning any... We're still not burning enough ethylene that we have stored up to start... Uh, burning biofuel to uh, cause us to burn more melons. I'm almost starting to think that this is bugged, that somehow it's bugged and that I'm getting infinite energy, free energy out of this thing or something. Not that I'll complain, mind you, but uh, it can't be right that I'm doing everything in my base and not even, <laughs> and not doing anything except having this thing built. So if we think about it, if I'm burning at 5,000 RF per tick, then, and this creates 60,000 per tick, then every, um, you know, every dozen ticks or so, this should need to pump out 60,000 RF. And at that rate, you'd think it would eventually burn enough ethylene. but it's still at a rate where, so basically it's so efficient that it's still at a rate where it looks like every 12 ticks or so, it's burning 2.8 millibuckets. <laughs> so, um, yeah, under 3% of a uh, bucket. And so our ethylene is down by 12 millibuckets. That still doesn't seem quite right that I'm not using things up faster. But oh well, I'm not going to complain. I just feel like at some point the system it's gonna, is going to write itself and suddenly I won't have enough power. But, you know, 5,000, uh, you know, 5,200 RF per tick is still not huge. So I think we're doing good with power still, even with a couple of void miners. And I think they actually take less power as you upgrade them. Although upgrading the speed may counteract some of that. I think they become more efficient but the speed, um, plus any speed modifiers you do, may counteract the efficiency. But, um, let's see, so, oops, just gonna throw some more light around here. Check this one last time. I forget what machine it was, but one of the machines I built recently, I think uh, if you remember a long time ago, I needed terracotta for immersive engineering uh, connectors, and I got a bunch of red or orange or something terracotta, and I had to, I just for kicks and giggles, washed it in uh, by bucketing water into this, the uh, thing, 
putting the terracotta in here and then running water, running smelter water over it to wash it and turn it to baseline terracotta. But I think I now have a machine that uh, will wash terracotta. I forget which one exactly. That might be good to know. Um, yeah, so not much else to say about all this. Biggest decision I got with these guys is uh, when to upgrade this to two. And I probably better wait until I have enough erodium to also upgrade this one. Boring. I'm going to upgrade it now. Faster, bigger, better. All right. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to be the end of this episode. Um, more progress was made. Now we have two void miners. Everything is wonderful. We are making progress. Uh, and I will talk to you next time.